Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is drink tea and read the paper. Why that's the best advice you can give to your operators and technicians and why you must stop them constantly adjusting your machinery. Drink tea and read the paper. Um, so that's the, that's the subject. Take your hands off. Drink tea. And read the paper. Adjustment is typically a bad thing, is what we're basically saying here, folks. Adjustment is typically a bad thing. Now, often when I say this to my clients, they always say, ah, but Paul, we have to adjust because the raw material that comes in is varying. We have to adjust to to take that variability away. Okay. It's a point of view. However, here's the deal. If the variability that comes into you is completely random, you can only make it worse. If the variability that comes into you is predictable, then you can adjust it away. So let's look at the two scenarios. Let's talk about one that's predictable first of all. So in other words, if your material comes in and it looks like that, and then it arrives and it looks like that, and then it arrives and it looks like that, that is predictable variability. Because you can see when it starts, you can see when it ends, it has a period, it has a period, it has a period. And you can put settings in, you know, settings A, settings B, settings C. I don't have a problem with that. However, look at the way I've drawn the graph. You see the little bit of variability within. What I don't want you to try and do is to take the variability within the batch away. And that's what's happening most of the time. Most of the time your material comes in and it's a random pattern. It's not predictable. It's random. And people think they can adjust random variability away out of their process. And they can't. You will only make it worse. So let me show you this with a very simple process. I'm going to put you in control of this process. I'm going to use dice. I quite like to use dice. Um, nice random number generators. Your processes are random number generators. So it's a nice simple random number generator we understand. And uh, what I'm going to suggest is that I only want threes, fours and fives. Any other number is a reject. Okay, so we have a very simple process. So let's, let's draw the process. So here it is, it's, it's dice. The result coming out the end is what you're in charge of. And of course, we've got the, the ordinary dice result. But in order to give you control and to replicate what happens with your machinery, because the dice here is representing the random variability that comes from your material. To put you in control, I'm going to give you another dial. Because this is what you do. You adjust the process with another dial. I'm going to give you an offset. Okay. So I'm going to put you in control of the machine. And I want you to see if you can make that dice stay in the 345 region. Okay, so I've put you in charge. We've got control now because we've got an offset. And you often put offsets in machinery. You sometimes change the speeds and the feeds. But sometimes it's just a basic offset and you dial in offsets. Um, so this is a very common thing to do. Now obviously if I just run the process, this dice of course, if I just ran it normally, what would it do? Well, because it would just go between 6 at the top and 1 at the bottom. That's its natural behaviour. That's as bad as it would get. 
and we would know that we'd get one defect at the top we'd get a six which is above my five tolerance and I'd get two defects at the bottom below my three tolerance I'd get ones and twos so I know I'd get a 50% defect rate that's as bad as it would get and I know that I can predict that that's a predictable result I know that my process is incapable and it's going to give me 50% defects so in order to stop that happening we've got the offset to help us okay now obviously if I roll the dice and I get something I'm happy with like that I got a three um, obviously there's no there's no offset but if I keep rolling the dice because eventually I'm gonna roll something I'm not happy with so let's say I roll a six where do you want to put the offset now you have just rolled a six which of course is one above my top tolerance so why don't we put the offset to minus one okay great but of course when I start rolling if I roll a one now well if I take the offset away what do I end up with I don't end up with one actually I'm gonna get a zero now because I can go lower than my my previous band which was one to six oh okay I've gone to zero well zero is three below my bottom tolerance now so when am I going to put my offset Ooh. well I would have put it a plus three really did not I so let's put my offset look up to plus three okay well I'll roll some more and maybe you know if I, if I roll some small numbers well I've rolled a four there but of course four plus three I would have been happy with four but because there's a plus three offset oh now I've hit seven flip my neck I'm one too big what am I going to do well I better turn the offset better turn the offset to minus one therefore um, you know, I'm back to the same problem I'm going to get zeros again um, and then of course I'm going to I'm going to wind the offset I mean look if I've got an offset down at minus one and then I've got an offset at plus three where can I put these two now well I can be up here at nine at the top I can be down here at zero at the bottom that made it better didn't it so by using the offset what have I just done I've made it worse and of course if I get more uh, dramatically varying numbers this thing could could go even further if I'm not happy what's the operator doing by using the offset typically what they're doing when they are dealing with random variability and by the way that's what they're dealing with most of the time when they're dealing with random variability if you give them an offset your your operator will happily make the process worse they say 90% of the time when they use the adjustment 90% of the time what does an operator do they make it worse they don't know they're making it worse by the way they think they're taking a perfectly rational decision here they were they were one below the tolerance they'll they'll wind it up or the one above the tolerance they'll wind it down they think they're making a perfectly rational decision but what they're doing is they're taking this picture and they're just winding it up and down they can only make it better if they had this then this would be okay this is predictable variability arriving now it's very rarely this it's very rarely this I want to I want to just show you why it's very rarely this don't forget what you've often got for your material incoming is a tolerance what you've often done is you've gone to the cheapest supplier so if you look at their process their process because they're cheap isn't going to be particularly brilliant it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be anything wrong with it by the way it's appropriate if their if their process is just capable of meeting your tolerances that's okay but they have no room to do this they are the, the only thing they can do is hit the target because if they don't hit the target they're going to get defects they're going to get costs incurred because the, these are the costs that they have to bear they have to sort this out 
they have to filter this away and not deliver it to you. So often, you've got a process which is locked between the tolerance. Now, if the process was brilliant like this, so here are the tolerances, and the process is highly capable. So what you're saying is, you've gone to a supplier that has a process that looks like that. And of course, if they have a process that looks like that, they have the freedom to put that distribution anywhere inside those specifications and to do that to you. But you that's the expensive supplier. You didn't go to the expensive supplier, you go to the appropriate supplier. They're much cheaper, their capability is unlikely to look like this. So it's, it's always likely to be random variability that you're adjusting your offset to. In other words, if it's always random variability that you're adjusting your offset to, 90% of the time, what's your operator doing? They are making it worse. The best advice you can give them is to dial the settings in. They are the owners of the settings. They use the standard settings. They dial them all in or they call up the program or whatever it is. They use the standard settings and they sit on their backside and they drink tea and read the paper because that is much better than making the process worse. Tell your operators to drink tea, read the paper, use the standards and make the most amount of money out of your process. Drink tea, read the paper. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.